up here at the clinic, we just had an interesting case where a few things actually were pretty textbook. So we want to talk about that a little bit today because we actually had a college thrower, uh, plays junior college baseball. He's coming in with some shoulder problems. We'll look at his MRI here briefly and we'll look at his throwing mechanics. When you look at his throwing mechanics here on the screen, you see is that he goes way up into abduction, drops the elbow a bit, and then his elbow shoots forward as his elbow's low. So that's gonna give us a large shearing load as the athlete goes into acceleration and into the cocking phases of the throw. And importantly, he does not have a great deceleration arc. He doesn't utilize his whole body to slow his arm down. So shoulder injuries occur during the acceleration phase, the deceleration phase. In this case, we're really concerned with both but we're kind of more concerned with that acceleration phase because where you're at in the acceleration phase is gonna dictate what you do later in the throw. His ball's further away from him, so that's going to increase his moment of inertia and increase the uh, amount of external load that's placed on the glenohumeral joint. When you think about a low elbow, we're thinking about internal impingement. Internal impingement being impingement of the posterior components of the shoulder from the posterior superior aspect of the greater tuberosity of the humerus and the posterior superior or posterior uh, aspect of the glenoid. And oftentimes with internal impingement, we get pinching of the underside of the infraspinatus tendon and sometimes the underside of the posterior aspect of the supraspinatus tendon. That pinching or that impingement over time can lead to fraying and tearing and degenerative chain uh, or cascade of events that occurs as a result of that tearing that leads to synovial fluid leaking into the actual contractile tissue. So it's not a good thing. We often see labral tearing, posterior labral tearing, but what we wanna do is, now that we've kind of seen how he sequences his throw a little bit, almost a textbook case for low elbow uh, elongated lever arm as he goes through the acceleration phase. We'll take a quick look at MRI report and MRI. Looking at the report here, just so we have some perspective, which in physical therapy is often um, very beneficial to have the radiology report. I like to look at both, however. We're gonna look here, subchondral cystic and reactive changes greater tuberosity. These are often compression related. These jam and two bones together, but also these can be tensile related as the tendon um, or as the infraspinase, the rotator cuff, really pulls hard on the bone, but generally we'll see cystic and subchondral changes with excessive compressive load that's a result of a impingement syndrome, particularly internal impingement, which we're seeing a bit of here. Tendinosis um, versus partial tear um, of the infraspinatus tendon and that's going to be a hallmark of internal impingement. If we see supraspinatus involved, generally we're thinking with low elbow, it's the posterior aspect, but this is internal impingement as opposed to subacromial impingement because he doesn't get that high in the throw and this is going to be an out to in tear. So sometimes in these reports, they'll say an undersided tear. They may say what layer of the rotator cuff is actually torn, but we're thinking here inside of the rotator cuff, to outside of the rotator cuff, in to out. And then also we're gonna note some posterior labral damage, uh, degeneration that we're gonna see here, which is very common um, for this mechanism. Actually looking at an axial image here, it's always nice when the theoretical matches up with the practical, the realistic uh, imaging that we see in some of our athletes. So if we look here at the image, we'll actually see in this location where there's actually some bone marrow edema and subchondral bony changes we can note. That occurs when this aspect of the humeral head compresses with the posterior aspect of the glenoid rim and glenoid labrum. That's why we see on that report a bit of degenerative uh, change to that posterior labrum, damage to the posterior labrum as a result of compression as the humeral head externally rotates when the elbow's low and dragging far behind and then in this image, you can also start to see where the infraspinatus tendon actually had some irregularity and damage in here, which is largely due to a pinching impingement uh, syndrome that we've discussed here. And if we can alleviate that stress through therapeutic exercise, 
and in the throwing motion, we can be very successful in the rehabilitation of this ad. We're on a T2 fat suppressed image here. We should see some nice homogeneous um, tendinous structure coming into the attachment point um, on the greater tuberosity, that, that footprint point um, for the rotator cuff. And what we'll actually see here is a few things. Number one, we'll see very easy. We'll actually see this uh, hyper intensity here and they noted there that that's subchondral cystic change and we're seeing it right around that that attach, attachment point there of the rotator cuff change to the rotator cuff we also see heterogeneous um, tissue here coming into that footprint coming in through the the tendinous structure here of the rotator cuff and you know that's not completely uncommon undersided tear right so looking at seeing the underside we're seeing that as we actually go through here we can see not only heterogeneity but some hyper intensity some some white in there as it comes into the attachment point. We don't see a nice solid gray. We see some black speckled with gray, speckled with white, which is not what we like to see in that tendon. This isn't a particularly um, bad tendon, but it's definitely taken some wear and tear. And that's why this bone here, you can see that there is uh, some cystic and inflammatory change. There's some water um, and fluid it's actually uh, in that subchondral, subchondral bone. So we see that heterogeneity as it comes down into the anchor point. And uh, the front side looks good, like the subscapularis. So something we commonly see as you move posteriorly, which is moving into that infraspinatus tendon, you will see that there is actually some, some damage when the athlete has a low elbow in the throw. So just a really nice clinical case and easy to see if you manipulate a cadaveric shoulder that as you rotate the shoulder externally with the arm horizontally abducted, externally uh, rotated to a degree, you will get a peeling or shearing effect on the underside of the rotator cuff where it's actually compressing and pinching and that can lead to some of these subchondral changes that we see here. So just a nice little clinical textbook case. Make sure you guys uh, subscribe to the channel. We'll show you guys some more throwing related videos and, and um, keep relating the pathology to the biomechanics.